So we've seen how the Cold War began and numerous instances of how it uh, got hot, so to speak. But the election of Ronald Reagan in the United States really ushered in a new era in American politics. Americans were weary of embarrassments like Watergate, you know, they're tired of long gas lines, and the seizure of American hostages by Iranian revolutionaries really put a damper on the American spirit. Reagan was strong, brash, and firmly anti-communist, and he brought this attitude with him towards foreign policy and military spending. The term Reagan Revolution refers to the conservative backlash against what was deemed as the liberal excesses of the 1960s and 1970s. The government sought to roll back the role of the federal government in areas like social welfare, civil rights, and environmental and financial regulations. Reagan found an ally in British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, who also wanted to scale back the government and forcefully confront the Soviet Union. Some were alarmed by the language of Reagan, who referred to the Soviet Union as the evil empire. European leaders balked at this and preferred language that spoke of a peaceful coexistence. Reagan even traveled to Germany in 1987, stood in front of the Berlin Wall, and declared, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Now contrast that with the USSR under Leonid Brezhnev, who was in charge from 1964 to 1982. This was a relatively stable time. Basic needs were guaranteed, the pensions were secure, and Soviets were allowed to take an annual vacation. And these basics were more than sufficient for those who lived through Stalin and World War II. But the younger generation clamored for more. They were aware of the higher standard of living afforded in the West, and they wanted it for themselves. It didn't help that the Soviet Union had an inefficient economy, and better and abundant consumer products really never materialized. Making new military commitments in Afghanistan didn't help, and when the Reagan administration increased military spending in the 1980s, the Soviets could not keep pace. When Brezhnev died in 1982, the aging party members struggled to maintain order. Mikhail Gorbachev would consolidate power and assume control in 1985. He believed that for the Soviet Union to be saved, real change would need to be made. He called the time of Brezhnev an era of stagnation, and he vowed for real change. Now, the two main things that stand out of the reforms of Gorbachev are Perestroika and Glasnost. In addition to this, he also withdrew from Afghanistan and reached out to President Reagan to limit arms, but Perestroika and Glasnost really are what get the headlines. Economic centralization was to come to an end, the state was still going to take the lead, but market incentives would be used instead of bureaucratic command to manage production. That's perestroika, economic restructuring. Subjects like politics that were previously forbidden to talk about were now fair game. That's glasnost. That's the openness. This policy was tested when officials tried to cover up Chernobyl, angering the Soviet people and their European neighbors. You know, Gorbachev had promised that honesty and openness would mark the new USSR. Glasnost worked because speech and press were as free as they had been since the earliest days of the revolution. Perestroika failed to materialize because consumer goods were still in short supply and Soviets had to wait in very long lines for essentials like milk, bread, and eggs. The main difference is that now they can complain about it. Glasnost also led to the downfall of the USSR. Nationalism began to prevail as ethnic groups within the Soviet Union were allowed to speak out against Russian domination. So this led to increased nationalism in Georgia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. Gorbachev agreed to a treaty giving these uh, republics de facto independence as Commonwealth with rule from Moscow. In summer of 1989, pressure was placed on East German authorities to allow movement into the West 
after Hungary opened its border with Austria. Huge crowds gathered at the wall, and one gate was unexpectedly opened, allowing East Berliners to stream across. Now, the wall was demolished soon after, and across Eastern Europe, there was a legitimate fear that soldiers would be forced to fire on these crowds of protesters. They did not do this, and the world simply rejoiced. A coup d'etat was attempted in 1991 by hardline communists, but huge cr crowds gathered to protect the government of the new Russian Republic, and the Communist Party was outlawed. Gorbachev's desire to find a middle ground between Marxism-Leninism and market reforms ultimately failed, and the Soviet Union ceased to exist on January 1st, 1992. Cold War, for all intents and purposes, had ended.